Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So this is part two of my junk journal series that I'm doing. Um, I'll probably wait a week before I do the next one, just because, you know, so I, I'm still doing my abstract and my jelly plate as well, and anything else that takes my fancy or anybody asks for. So I am doing five envelopes decorated five different ways. So this first envelope is collage and napkins and a Baroque, lovely Baroque book page. So these little bits of paper that I'm using are from Kerry Griffiths from my Happy Mail. And they've got lovely, it looks like he's maybe used alcohol markers and then alcohol to help them bleed out um, or maybe other types of sprays or you know when he's not used coffee as such to dye the paper but he's dyed them with something else so i'm just adding in some brown paper as well what happens with these is because i'm putting the napkin over the top you're still going to see them through the envelope but they also add a lot of sturdiness to the envelope and texture and it just feels really good in your hands so quite a neutral collage i'm doing um similar to the junk journal cover that i did in the last video now to adhere everything i am using a glue stick from q connect which at first it doesn't stick like for the first five minutes, it doesn't give a very sticky hold. But after five minutes, it's got a brilliant hold. And then that's matte medium, which is fluid. And then when it dries, it gives a really good hold. And I find when I'm using the fabrics with it as well, that when it dries, it holds them very well too. So some of those book pages are very old. And I'm just using that big sheet of brown paper to stop me um, messing up the inside of the envelope because that's where I put in my Baroque picture. So I will dry this before I move on to the next stage. And I'm going to do the napkin now. So again, this is just matte medium over the envelope. Now, this piece here to the left of me is... Um, I debated using that. And it is... It's a page out of a book. It's a lovely Victorian ladies' fashion page. And what I've done is I've pulled off... Um, you know when I've put Mod Podge on one side and then on the other side, once the Mod Podge had dried, I've rubbed away the paper. So it makes it quite translucent. I got these napkins 20 for £1.50 in Morrison's supermarket. They may even have been reduced. So I'm just giving it a quick dry. So the napkin gets laid down on top of a layer of matte medium and then matte medium, a layer of matte medium is put over the top as well and that just helps secure it even more because obviously the napkin, the glue will kind of seep through it to the paper and it also protects the napkin from like tearing, once it's dry, <laughs> from tearing and I'm just using a wet paintbrush, just water, just to sort of rub the edges and get a much smoother edge around the edges. It is easier to do when it's completely dry, I will say. So you can see there with the napkin nearly dry that it's, um, it's lovely and translucent and it's very whimsical, the design that's on it. I use a napkin later on and it's a very rich 
navy blue napkin. And it's just, napkins can give you just, they can change the tone. You know, they can be the feature of the envelope like this one is. Even though there's collage going on, there's a Baroque design going in. The butterflies are still, you know, the main focus. They set the tone of this envelope. And I love butterflies. I tend to avoid using them most times because sometimes it feels like a cop-out. <laughs> because butterflies are, they're so commonly used, it feels like keep them for when you're really struggling. But these napkins are just beautiful. So it still looks very rough at the moment. And there's a lot of gluing and drying. But it is worth the effort. And you can see the difference when the napkin is put over the collage. You know, it's, it's got a very vintage look to it. Whereas on the other side, it's got a very clean, whimsical look to it. And it's just really nice to see both types. So this is the book page I was talking about that I had um, done an image transfer with. Where I've used the Mod Podge. I think I've put a couple of layers down. There is a video. I will link it in the description. But I've put a couple of layers of Mod Podge on one side of the book page. And then... I've turned the book page over when that was dry and I've rubbed the, the white paper away as much as possible so that the design, you know, the print of the paper is left on the Mod Podge. Although there is still some remnants of the paper there. It's just much thinner than it was. And it just blends in beautifully to that napkin. And it feels... To me, it feels like a glassine envelope. It's got that type of feel to it. But it's just beautiful on top of there. And you have to look closely to see it. You can tell it's two little girls. But to see the detail of it, you need to, you know, you need, you need to focus on it. And that just, just brings interest to it, the envelope. So... Obviously, the font of the Premiership Card Services <laughs> envelope is um, quite modern, but we're just covering it mostly up with this doily. So again, this was from Kerry Griffith in the Happy Mail. Um, Kerry's Creative Designs. And he gave me 10 of them, so I don't feel bad using one of them on this envelope. And this envelope is worthy of the doily. So I use the glue stick just to kind of hold the doily in place and then I'm using the matte medium and I'm using, it's quite a stiff bristled brush this one, it's a hog hair brush and I'm kind of poking it through the fabric if you like so that it's got a good adherence to it. Now you could open up the envelope fully and sew it on but I'm not doing any sewing on these envelopes just now. Now this is a china pencil and I'm using it to darken the edges but also I find that it helps just get the rough edges of the napkin or the collage or whatever off. It just helps me have a good look at everything that I've done, make sure that there's, you know, it's as tidy as it can be and that I've not really missed anything obvious. Now this is a pepping press book and they do a lot of pattern books and this is baroque designs now is baroque italian i'm not sure i think it's around about the renaissance time anyway don't quote me on that but these books are brilliant you can buy them very cheap on ebay second hand i mean that book probably cost me between three and five pound and it's also excellent for image transfers that would transfer almost perfectly. So I actually end up using the table side of the picture, even though that's not what I intended. It just sits better in the part of the envelope that you can see. Whereas with this kind of seahorse 
huge sea creature shape. It you did you you lost most of it to the inside. But that it just goes so well. See with that collage and that napkin, it goes so well. This was my favourite envelope because I love the way that you've it it gives obviously both sides look vintage, but one's more of a whimsical vintage and one's more of a kind of um you know, a rich tapestry type vintage. And they just they're just lovely. So what I do as well round the edges there. I've not shown it on this envelope, but I just get some either matte medium or the glue stick on my fingers and I just run my fingers around the edge just to, you know, seal the edges together, basically. And then I'm just going round with some Distress Oxide on top of the China pencil. And... I'm just going to use a script stamp to just finish it off. It just adds that finishing touch. And I'm using the black. Um, I used to use the Distress Oxide for everything, but I've actually grown to prefer the black. Though I still do like the Distress Oxide around the outside. couple of wee stamps in here and we are done it's gorgeous very pleased so this is envelope number two now this was a mother's day card envelope and as you can see it's a beautiful kind of pale turquoise color and so I want to make use of that so what I decided to do was do some jelly printing on top of it and I've chosen Amsterdam colours of pale sky blue and deep naples yellow. I'm using one of the wooden tags that Kerry gave me um, as, a, as a baron. It's a makeshift baron. Um, as you can see, that didn't transfer wonderfully, but there's still something really nice about it. And, I do, you know, it's got a distressed look to it. There's parts that have disappeared as if it's scraped off over time. So with this stencil, which is a mandala stencil, I'm trying to do kind of blue centres and yellow on the outside of the the flowers of the mandala. Um, not the easiest job. I think I probably should have used a paintbrush or a silicon wedge or something. But then it would have been a lot thicker. So it's easier just to wipe the, the parts I don't want off with the tissue, to be honest. And also, if I miss out parts of the flowers, that's okay as well. We're, go we're more going for the suggestion of flowers because the colours are very similar to the envelope. So it, this, is all, this is a very muted look overall to the envelope that we're going for. And it's another way to express yourself with the jelly plate doing the envelopes as well because... It's actually a lovely thing to gift to somebody, you know, with a card in it. It's just something a wee bit more special. I was quite proud of myself at that point. I felt like, oh, I'm multitasking. I'm holding a stencil up. I'm opening out paint. I'm rolling the brera in it. Do you know, I think the choice of paint colours here actually enhanced that envelope as well? So it, it's nice to actually be using that as part of it. When In the first envelope, it was all about hiding it. It was about using the shape of the envelope 
as the base and turning it into something else. But this, this one's more about enhancing what we've already got. So I'm going to let these dry completely on top of the jelly plate and then we're going to use silver paint to lift them off. Just rolling the prayers off because I need to use one of them for the silver paint. So I'm just protecting the inside of the envelope. Because we'll do something else in there. I do love the inside of the envelope being different to the outside. So I chose silver because it's a cool colour and, you know, it's actually really quite translucent as well. So it should just bring a shine to the envelope rather than changing the colour. Trying to choose the best section of flowers. There we go. So I'm hoping to cover the whole envelope like right into the corners so that it looks like the whole back of the envelope is one image rather than having loose bits round the outside. I have cut some of the drying time so this will have sat for longer than it looks Probably about two or three minutes I left it on for. There we go. Oh, it's just really lovely. Do you know, this makes me think of summer. It's like spring, summer, it's fresh. So what I'm doing here is on the front. I really like that first flower we put on. And I don't want to cover that up so I'm just doing an edge. Because I'm going to put a pocket on this envelope. So this will be covered but I'm using a vellum pocket. So it's still um, transparent. So you will still get the suggestion of the flowers coming through. So after this, I am just going to add some to the, I think I do the bottom edge actually, nope, the flap. And I've went diagonally across the flowers to try and pick up the best part of what's left. So, you know, that it's the two flowers, but it is very dry now. So it's not the best transfer. However, it does pick up some colours, so it does bring the flap into, you know, it, it makes it more cohesive with the rest of the envelope. I was actually very pleased with how much, I, how many times that I could use the paint that was on the jelly plate before it dried up completely. So I'm just doing a little bit on the bottom. To create almost a frame on the front of the envelope. That is beautiful, isn't it? Do I've started to really enjoy tone on tone when I'm using similar colours on top of each other? So this is the China pencil again. Um, obviously there's no loose bits to look for this time. I just like using it. I, I like the effect. It, it gives a sharpness to it, the frame, and I find that I'm less heavy-handed with the Distress Oxide. So this is the Baroque book again um, by Pepin Press. They do so many pattern designs. They're my favourite pattern design book. I mean, I don't buy scrapbook paper. I buy books. It's just 
my preference. So again, I think I use the design on the other side. I'm sure I do. There's a lot of colour pictures in that book. It's just that I think because there's been a lot of colour put on the envelopes on the outside, I've, that's why I've chosen the black and white images. So with this one, I'll show you the sealing the edge. I mean, it's very simple. Most people probably do it. It's just something I hadn't done before. And because I'm using the full book page, I do want it to adhere to the envelope securely. I think if you were sewing it, it wouldn't matter as much. That's all I do. And then I run my finger over it and squeeze them together and just... You know, give them that wee extra layer of security. So, I have stamped over where I, Mum was written. So, you actually can still see Mum through it. But you would have to look closely to see it. And I like that. And this is the vellum piece that I'm using as a pocket. Now, I think this was a green and yellow set or something that I got from the range. I think it was two pound for like 30 sheets they're a5 size and um, they there's three of each design basically so you've got 10 designs 30 sheets there we go it goes really well i was thinking that maybe i should have chose a pa paler a planar colour, however, a planar design, sorry, but I feel that because the envelope is, the colours of the envelope all blend in together, they're like tone on tone, I feel like that's where the plainness is and it can actually handle this design. So that Q Connect, um glue stick it is very very secure when it dries in but again you could take the envelope apart and you could stitch this I'm just choosing not to because I'm being a bit lazy and also it's quite nice it's quite nice to see it without the stitching sometimes I use stitching to hide my my errors and to make things look more vintage So I'm using the white Posca pen here to kind of cover up a bit of an error. I had cut that Baroque picture just a bit too narrow for the width of the envelope. Then I thought I'll make a feature of it with the gold Posca pen, but it didn't fit in with the style of the envelope. So I've just went over it again with the white Posca pen. A bit of distress oxide around the outside. And then on the Baroque picture, I go a little bit mad with the stamping. Um, I don't know why. I, I honestly don't know why I did it. I think it's probably because I couldn't get in properly and the angles were a bit sharp and I kept just trying to bring it together. But anyway, it's still fine. It's just not as... It's just a bit too overdone, but that's okay. Do you know... We'll, we'll get a big tag or a big something in there to cover it up. And here it is here. Lovely, isn't it? So this is envelope three and I am using stencils and sprays for this one. Um, now my stencils, I don't look after them very well. They're a bit bent in areas. They... Um, have a lot of paint stuck to them so when I've used the spray it's leaked through little areas where the stencil had a ripple in it but what happens is I haven't shown you every layer because I do four layers on each side I'm trying to hold it down tighter here and then I give myself incredible hulk hands 
So I'm really using the paper to try and flatten the stencil down as well as remove the excess spray. So these are Lindy's sprays and this is a set of five that is called Industrial Chic. And out of the five colours, there's three that I really like. There's a sepia, a grey and a lime green one. You'll know the lime green one as soon as I spray it. So I'm just trying to hold the stencil down as best I can. It doesn't really work. So this is a coin envelope, the sort of envelope that a child would be given to take money into school, for example. And again, this was another gift from Kerry in the Happy Mail. So I wasn't overly impressed with how this envelope turned out. It was okay. I think maybe that I should have done something with the brown colour like maybe put gesso over it in a distressed fashion beforehand because I think that would have helped the sprays stand out more but it's still okay and what happens is I end up putting a belly band on it this is from Canva I think I've downloaded this from Canva, printed it out, but what I've done is I've printed it onto masking paper. So it's got a textured, not masking paper, masking tape. So it has a textured feel to it. And then I've backed it with the brown paper. I don't think I cut it that straight to begin with and I'm trying to straighten it up even more. there. Folding it properly will help. Top tip, try and fold in a straight line if you can. There we go. Oh, I'm still fiddling. Do you know, I'm actually really liking that brown paper and I'm thinking I should have used a different piece. <laughs> I'm thinking, what a waste of that brown paper. So this is a vintage book page and it's got some piece of vellum. On, I think it's tracing paper actually on the top of it. I went through a wee phase of experimenting with the printer and I tried to print on anything that I thought I could get away with. So I've printed on tissue paper, tracing paper, um masking tape what i did with the masking tape though is because the masking tape can be removed you know from paper i have stuck it onto photocopier paper and printed on it and then pulled it off the photocopier paper to be honest with you i did mostly pull the paper off with it as well but the idea was there so this is it here it's quite dark looking i mean it does have a really rich tapestry vintage look to it but it just needs so it needed something a bit more um and i think that having had a less plain background would have made the difference there so this is just a very cheap envelope it came with invitation cards and i got it for like a set of 10 for 25 pence in the range in the sale so this envelope is very flimsy. Now this is some of the music paper that Kerry gave me. And I'm doing the inside of the envelope first this time. And that is some tissue paper that I had gotten. Do you know I think this is when I've bought number seven. Or I've been gifted number seven from Boots. Um, they wrap them in quite sturdy tissue papers. And I think that's what that is. But I like the colour of it with the music paper. I think it, um, they went well together. They didn't clash. They complemented each other without being opposites. So I 
it's actually quite hard to tear those envelope openings. Um, you know, when you've put one big piece on. So, I'm, I've got wee scraps of masking tape that I'm going to put down here. Um, not masking tape, washi tape. Again, this was from Kerry. I know I keep pointing out what Kerry gave me, but I feel like I should attribute to him because he did give me so much. That music paper is just lovely in there, isn't it? This So this one ends up quite scrappy. This is a scrappy, as if it's been very rich to begin with, and over time it's still been kept as a precious item, but it's obviously got wear and tear. That's the effect we're going for with this envelope. I'm just using the glue stick to make the washi tape. It, they generally don't adhere very well for very long if you don't stick them down with something else, especially if you've used them before, which this had been used. Do you know, I put that wee bit on there? Not because I felt it needed it. I put it on because I didn't want to waste it. So, this is... Oh, what's this book? What's this from? Is this the Baroque book? It is the Baroque book. Remember the Baroque book earlier on? The Pep and Press book? This is a page out of that. Or it could be the Renaissance. No, I think it's the Baroque book. It is. I have like 12 of these books. It's hard to remember what comes from what sometimes. I just wanted to add a bit of bronze in. Because I feel that with the tone of the colour of the music page and the tissue paper that it would go very well with the bronze and it does. This is just a jelly print torn up. So I'm going to put some lace on the front as well. I, I really like this envelope, it turned out really well. You know, sometimes I think that the back of the envelopes are more interesting than the front. I like the I like the way that you have the inside and the outside of the envelope. I think that's more interesting than the front, to be honest. When you're decorating them. So again, I'm just using the glue stick to hold it in place and then I'm using the matte medium to adhere it down securely. Um, this matte medium works well for me with fabric. I know different people use different glues. I like a multi-purpose glue. So that's been dried and this is again some of the jelly prints that Kerry gave me and I'm just using that on the top of the envelope and you shall see it in a minute. Bit of stamping I know I'm using this script stamp all the time, but I like this one for just giving the suggestion. Whereas the a lot of the other ones have like as if they're a chart or an actual stamp. And I like to do the fold of the envelope with just the china pencil. And here it is here. And this is the last one. Now, in the part one of this video series, I did the junk journal cover. And at the end, I showed you an envelope as a teaser for part two. So I basically, it this envelope is just covered with the napkin. 
and then I use some pan pastel with stencil on it. Now this napkin is, it just screams luxury and richness to me. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. I cannot believe I got 20 of these for pound fifty in Morrison's. So it's woodland creatures and it's got a nighttime feel to it. It's got the owl and the fox. I'm putting quite a lot of glue on the vent. The, the envelope has a bit of a gloss to it, so you just need that wee bit more just to help it stick. And I'm just putting the napkin over the whole envelope. And you'll see the one that I did in the previous video at the end as well. So there's really not much to this. It's it's a, just back to the the gluing and the drying and the kind of tidying up the edges. It's a bit of a dance between all of all of those. I look like I've been out gardening because of all those sprays and the glues and the inks. This is lovely. So this is an engineer's book page. So it's full of tables and numbers, but it's very old. So it's lovely. So I've torn it because it was slightly too wide, but I've tried to marry up the table again so that it has a rip in it, but the table itself doesn't look like it's been disturbed. I'm sure an engineer would know it had been disturbed though. So next I'm going to use the stencil with the pan pastels on this and to be honest with you I didn't expect the pan pastels to be so vibrant straight away. <laughs> I wish I'd blocked off part of the envelope you know like a, a corner or a stripe or something and did the stenciling on it because the envelope's quite small as well and I've literally covered the whole thing so while the stencil marks are beautiful they don't stand out they just look like part of the stencil because I've basically covered part of the napkin because I've covered the whole napkin with them It's lovely, isn't it? See the old yellow book paper with that luxury pattern? It's really nice. So you'll see it here. It just, it's obviously the napkin's very dark and I just didn't expect the pan pastel to be so strong. And I don't know why. I've used them plenty of times before. So I've lost the feature of the stencil by putting it all over. But it's fine it's a lesson learned and it's still beautiful it's not like i've destroyed the envelope or anything it's still a lovely design it's just not what i intended and that's them there so thanks very much for watching and i hope to see you soon and part three will be out next week and take care bye